You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Post, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Hey, everyone. Today, we're talking about the stress that the stock market causes many of us throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year. We're talking about that feeling you get when you look at your investment statements and you've lost money when you log into your account. Come to think of it, um, (laughs) we're thinking about the feeling you get before you even log into your account or before you even open up your statements to find out what the results have been because you're worried about what you're going to see because of something you've seen in the news, because you know things aren't going well. Uh, You know the market's been uh, in a bear market for several months or even a couple years, uh, like we've seen most recently. Um, And the number one reason financial plans fail is why. If you're a client of ours, you've heard this before, but it's it's because investors abandon their plans, their financial plans. And what's the number one reason why they abandon their retirement plans? It's because the volatility of the market causes impatience, frustration. And it's okay, by the way, but it causes them to throw their hands up, make changes they shouldn't, ultimately find themselves stressed out all over again as the cycle continues. There's a better way to do this, uh, and it's all about putting things into perspective. Um, But before we get into the meat of the conversation today, a couple housekeeping items as always. Um, If this is your first time listening or watching, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Adam Koch, President, Portfolio Manager, and Senior Financial Advisor at Libertas Wealth Management Group in Columbus, Ohio, and you're listening to the soon-to-be-renamed and rebranded Cash Podcast. I feel like I've been saying that for several months because I have. It's just been We've been having a ridiculously good year, um, record year actually, and there just hasn't been the time to finish up the rebranding, but it is coming. And uh, while the name is going to change, you're still going to be the first to get these episodes if you subscribe. So please be sure to link up and subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, and Spotify. And you can follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Adam Koch, that's Adam, A-D-A-M-K-O-O-S, as well as on Instagram at Adam D, as in David, K-O-O-S. Uh, If you'd like to schedule an intro call to confidentially discuss your financial situation in more detail, or if you'd just like to get a second opinion on your retirement plan and or investment portfolio, head over to our website at LibertasWealth.com. Just click on that little button that pops up that says, click here to get started. You can also email us or fill in the web form on the contact us page, any way you want to do it. But uh, within 24 hours or so, someone will reach out to you to get something on my calendar so we can chit chat. Uh, Last but not least, all we have today is a few pictures There's really not much in terms of charts or visuals that are all that important. So if you're listening on iTunes, uh, iTunes, easy for me to say, iTunes or uh, Spotify, don't worry about the charts today. Uh, We're just listening and talking and chatting. So let's go ahead and jump into the meat of the material here, starting with a quote of the day. As always, this is a quote by Billy Cox, and he said, you can't build a long-term future with short-term thinking. And I think that is ever-present, ever-important in the world of investment management, financial, and retirement planning. It is so crucial to have a long-term perspective. And we're going to start our analogies here. i got a few. I've got five analogies I wanted to share with you today. The first is that retirement planning, building your nest egg, planning for the future, saving for the future, it's a lot like planting a tree. And look at my neighborhood. Um, where we we built, well, we didn't build our house, we bought a house. And and when we we bought it, the house had already been built for 13 years at that point. So it had been around for a really long time. And I remember moving into the neighborhood, how the trees that lined the streets were a certain height. Um, If I had to guess how tall they were, I'm going to say maybe 20, 25 feet in height. Um, We've only been there for six years, but in the six years we've been there, these trees, they look like they've almost doubled in size. I'm going to say They probably haven't doubled to the point where they're at 50 feet, but I'm willing to bet they're 40 feet tall at this point. Now, it takes six years, and sometimes when you don't pay much attention and you just kind of go about your day, which is what you should do, I mean, people really shouldn't just stare at their tree and watch it grow if they plant one in the backyard, but over time, that tree does grow. It spreads uh, branches, they spread wider, it produces shade. Um, If it's a fruit-producing tree, obviously it produces fruit, but over time, the, it's just like investing, and you know there, we're going to see ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be uh, tree diseases, um, things that get in the way of the growth of that tree, you're going to have to water it, um, and especially early on in its life, um, but over time, your investments have the same kind of potential to exponentially grow and compound uh, to give you the retirement you've always dreamed of, if you just take the time to, to again, water it, be patient, 
um, and give them time to flourish, just like your investment portfolio. Um, but if you plant your tree, if you don't take your investment tree, we'll call it your money tree. And there we go. Um, and we don't water it. And if we don't give it the right amount of sunlight, if we don't uh, prop it up or keep it safe from animals or lawnmowers and things like that, then it's going to be a pretty rough, rough go in terms of uh, future growth of that tree. And the same can be said for our retirement plan. We've got to, you know, we've got to feed it. In other words, we've got to add money to it. We have to save over time. Um, we have to keep it safe. That means we don't always want to just be 100% aggressive in small cap international stocks. I mean, we want to be diversified. Um, so we could almost look at our backyard like a, a bunch of trees of different kinds and shapes and sizes and, and trees that um, are plants for that matter that flourish in different times of year or you know annuals versus perennials. I mean, this analogy can go crazy, um, but I think you get my point. So you know, at the end of the day, Investments need compound to return needs need time. I'm sorry to compound and and generate significant returns that you need in order to quit working. And uh, a tree needs the same t- thing. It needs that care, it needs that time, it needs that patience. Um, so that's the first analogy. Second analogy I want to share with you today is investing, retirement planning, financial planning. It's a lot like building a house. You know, when it comes to building a house, if uh, I know I personally have never uh, been firsthand. Uh, in in charge of or a partner in building a home, but I grew up in two homes that my parents built. Um, I've seen lots of clients do it. I've heard lots of stories. Um, we designed a house a few times, but never actually built it. At the end of the day, we ended up buying a house at a great interest rate. <laughs> and uh, these day, this day and age, it's kind of hard to want to leave. You know, even if we wanted to build, it'd be difficult given the the deal that we got in, in terms of price and interest rate. So, but just like building a house, you know, it takes careful planning. Uh, it takes once you've made a, made a plan and a design and figured out exactly what you want and made the changes to it. You know you have to build the right foundation. You have to put the right concrete in place. You know whether it's poured concrete and so on. Um, so you have to you know lay the groundwork. You have to start erecting the frame, um, and that has to be solid. Everything from you know the frame to insulation to siding, um, and then of course carpet versus hard floors, and then putting the finishing touches on it. Um, it's it's the same way with retirement planning. You know, you know it involves. You know, setting a financial foundation, putting that plan in place, the design, the blueprints for what you want life to look like, when you want to have the choice to quit working, um, how much money you're going to need, whether you're going to go on vacations and how often, uh, if you're going to do big trips versus small trips, how often you're going to replace vehicles net after trade-in. All of these things go into the plan, just like building a house. And and it's going to take, again, consistently putting bricks, siding, lumber, into place over time as you get closer and closer to retirement. Um, And when you do quit working, uh, that's when you have your completed home. Now you get to live in it. Now you get to enjoy the, you know, the fruits of your labor and the things that you built uh, that took years and years and years and lots of patience because sometimes weather gets in the way. And I I feel like it's always weather, by the way, almost every analogy, it seems like weather always has a a, a, a tendency to get in the way of our plans, but we just need to consistently save, consistently focus on the long term. Don't let the short term get in the way. Don't let delays and contractors being late and things of that nature get in the way of our long term plans so that we can build a financial, a solid financial house, so to speak, uh, that supports your retirement dreams. Now, next analogy. I really love this one because it's all about the team approach. Climbing a mountain. I've personally never climbed a mountain. I've climbed what we would call in, in Hungary kilatos, which are just uh, peaks, like very, very short peaks, usually castles at the top of them. But um, I've hardly climbed a mountain. Maybe someday, I don't know. It's not, kind of not really on my bucket list personally. Uh, but the analogy still works at the end of the day because, again, it's it's a team approach. It takes you know a Sherpa, maybe a leader, a guide to get help get you to the top of that mountain. Um, you can see here, in, and if you're watching on YouTube, I've got a picture of um, all these people climbing to the top of the mountain. People are holding hands. They're helping themselves up over rocks um, because it's not always easy. That mountain, you know, can take time. Um, you might face, you know, unpredictable weather. There we are again, weather again, right? Um, steep slopes, physical exhaustion even, thirst. Um, things can get really, really tough. And investing for your retirement also requires, you know, perseverance, you know, the ability to weather market fluctuations, volatility, market crashes, corrections, um, economic uncertainties, things that you'll see in the financial media, uh, things you'll see on the political media that might cause you to freak out. You know, you've got to really focus on the long term and not let these short term things get in the way. You know, just as a climber focuses on the long term goal of reaching the summit, its investors need to focus their time and 
and and their their concentration on their retirement goals at the end of, of retirement, which begins your call it your distribution phase of life or you know your the, the next phase or the next chapter in your journey. Because let's face it, when you retire, it's not the end of the plan; it's the beginning. It's the beginning of the next chapter in your life, which is enjoying the fruits of your labor and taking that money, which is a unit of choice. And the more the more units you have, the more choices you have, and putting those units to to work and enjoying your time with the people that you love, doing the things that you love. But um, you got to stay committed to the journey long term, even when things get tough, um, even when things are the most difficult. Again, I, I don't want to keep using weather analogies, but uh, the goal is uh, to get to the top of that mountain with your family, um, whether it's with a Sherpa or, Sherpa or not, uh, a guide or not. Some people, I always say, it's not impossible to manage your retirement plan and your investments on your own. You can do it. Honestly, it just takes two things. One, it takes time, and two, it takes interest. Uh, if you don't have the interest, you're probably not going to spend the time on it, just going to be frank. Um, and even if you do have the interest, many people don't have the time because they're busy working, making money for their family, spending time with their family, hobbies. You know, um, Not everybody puts financial planning and analyzing the stock market at the top of their hobbies. Um, but if it is at the top of your hobbies and you do love and enjoy it, then it is possible to do it. But otherwise, you know, we always joke that's why we have a job. Um, and we're kind of like the Sherpa in this mountain climbing expedition. And not only do we have to get at the top of the mountain here, but by the way, we have to get back down as well. And we can call that the distribution phase of your life, which is also, um, if not equally important, more important. The next analogy I want to share with you um, about stress and retirement planning. Some people hate flying. I, l- I like flying. Granted, you know, the the process isn't so fun. Um, but, you know, some people hate it. And, uh, you know, last I checked, unless you're a really, really good swimmer, and, you know, if you're trying to get overseas to another country, um, it, it's kind of hard to, to get there without booking a flight. Uh, so, you know, it, it, but it's a pain. Like I said, it's, you know, getting there early, two hours early, let's just say, um, you know, the waiting, the luggage, TSA, being frisked on occasion if you get chosen. Um, obviously, when you get on the plane, then there can be delays. The, the plane can pull out on the tarmac and you can sit there for hours. You can pull pull back in and, and end up getting deplaned. Now you got to wait for the next flight if it gets canceled. Um, and when you finally do end up in the air, there can be bad weather. There can be awful turbulence, which some people obviously think, I think that's what people hate the most about flying is the turbulence. But one of the best parts about flying to another country um, and in a plane is having a pilot to get you there. And uh, this is again, I, I'm going back to my analogy. I'm kind of putting two analogies in one here. But it's a lot like having a financial advisor, you know, um, or guide, kind of like the Sherpa I mentioned in the mountain climbing analogy that gets you from where you are today to uh, making work optional someday. Again, some people love pl- planes. They, they get their pilot's license and they fly their own plane. That's the analogy to, you know, you can manage your own retirement plan. You can manage your own investments. You can do your own research. It's entirely possible. But just like when you're a private pilot, you got to spend time in the air. You got to get hours up there. And you have to really enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to put hours in. You're not going to get hours in the air. And if you don't get hours in the air, you can crash. And crashing is no fun, obviously. Uh, obviously, when you crash your plane, you can end your life. Uh, you crash your portfolio, you can earn it back. Um, but the, lo- the older you get, the later you are in life, uh, the less people can afford to have their plane crash, metaphorically speaking, uh, because they don't have enough time to earn that money back so that they can quit when they'd like to have the choice to quit working, get and stay retired. So... Um, whether you fly your own plane or in, employ the help of a pilot to help you get there, the destination is still one that's going to require a lot of patience along the way. Um, and when it's turbulent, you know, you just kind of, you know, have to try and, um, try and, you know, grit down your teeth, maybe take some, uh, Dramamine or, or whatever your, uh, flight drug of choice might be to help you make it there. Because at the end of the day, um, you're going to get there just fine. And one, two, three months from now, two years from now, five years from now, you're not going to think about that flight anymore. And I guess that's another one of the big lessons here is that when we look back at all of the things that have happened in the market, in politics, in the economy over the years, the, the things that are happening right now, they seem so important. They seem, in some cases, so scary. Some, sometimes they seem like, um, I don't want to use the phrase doom and gloom, but they seem like, it seems like our country is doomed. You know, uh, some people, when they call us, I feel like sometimes that's how they feel. And I understand it, it definitely sometimes feels that way. But when you look back in time, I can, I can say that the, the Mark Twain quote, you know, Mark Twain once said that, you know, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. And so I think you can look back and probably see a lot of things that have happened throughout history that 
maybe aren't exactly like they are today, but they rhyme. You know, they're similar. There's 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 similarities between them. And again, a year from now, we're not going to remember the debt ceiling debacle. Uh, two years from now, we're not going to remember what was happening with the I-95 bridge collapse, which, by the way, great great uh, analogy to my, uh, or I'm sorry, segue to my last analogy here, which is driving cross country. So let's just say we don't fly, we're not going overseas, there's no way in the world I'm getting on a plane anyway, your analogy doesn't work, Adam, sorry. Well, let's drive across the country then. Some people who, people who hate flying, usually they don't mind driving. Um, so if we're going to drive someplace and that's how we're going to get there, whether it's going from New York to LA or vice versa, you know, if a couple is going to visit some friends uh, across the country, um, chances are you're going to run into some, some construction. Uh, chances are, depending on the time of year, you're going to hit some uh, weather. Um, the weather that you hit may or may not cause you to um, slow down. It might even cause you to reverse pro- uh, progress if you have to get off the highway and stop and wait for a while. Uh, you will definitely probably hit detours. There's some amazing apps out there like Waze that help us avoid things like that or maybe even create their own detours for you to help you uh, kind of nip, nip it in the bud before the problem becomes a problem. Uh, we use Waze all the time, but at the end of the day, you are you have to stay the course in order to get to where you're going. And I think that at the first, um, at the first sign of, of bad weather, at the first detour, at the first sign of a uh, set of construction, um, or just, uh, you know, this past couple months, you know, there was the, the I-95 bridge that collapsed. Um, just because you run into a collapsed bridge doesn't mean you turn around, go home, and cancel your trip. You don't cancel the vacation. Just like you're not going to cancel retirement just because we've had some blips along the way, and maybe even, I'm not even call them blips because that might not be fair. Even if we've had a huge, death-defying market crash, we're not going to let that get in the way of you reaching your goals of A, making work optional someday, B, quitting and having the cho- or having the choice to quit working when you'd like to have the choice to do so, C, being able to do the things that you want to do with the money that you've saved up so that you can D, uh, live a stress-free retirement and not have to worry about this stuff so much. Because volatility, it's just part of the market. Just like uh, when we look back at all these analogies, you know, I'll move, I'll move forward here. It's, you know, driving, we just got done talking about driving, you know, but long-term commitment, thinking long-term, I'm telling you, it is one of the biggest keys to success in investing in retirement planning. There is an extremely high correlation. This is the proof. There's, study, there's studies that have been done that prove, that prove there is an extremely high correlation between how often somebody logs into their account or looks at their statements and, and, and their stress levels. And with that stress level, the higher the stress level, the higher the probability that they make mistakes or they make changes that they wish they wouldn't have made or they throw their hands up and say, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm getting out of the market. So you have to stay patient. You have to plant the seeds, going back through our analogies here. We have to plant the seeds. We have to water them. We have to give that, that uh, tree time to grow. We have to build a strong foundation for our financial house. We have to put one foot in front of the other when we're climbing that mountain. We have to recognize that setbacks, detours, um, even reversing course at times, it's all part of the journey. Now, if we're driving across the country, we might be able to get in a better car. Maybe instead of you know taking a uh, um, a tiny little uh, rear wheel drive vehicle, maybe we want to drive something a little safer, something you know that's more of a moderate growth or balanced portfolio. I'm thinking bigger SUV, something with some beef, four wheel drive, you know that can make it through some of this tougher weather and uh, isn't going to cause us to white knuckle it the whole way. But again, this it's all part of the journey and how we get there. It's all about building that plan making that roadmap, and then making adjustments along the way. And the last but not least, to increase your chances of riding off into the sunset, you know, hitting that that retirement date you've always wanted, living a fulfilling, relaxing, and stress-free retirement, doing all the things you wanted to do, hitting all the things on your on your bucket list that you always wanted to hit. Um, you have to learn to focus your eyes on the horizon and not your feet. And if we're if we're going back to our driving analogy or a marathon analogy, running um, looking down at our feet the whole time, we're going to end up tripping, tripping over something. We're going to end up running into something, um, and we're going to get in a big accident. So we got to focus long term. We got to focus on the horizon and not our feet. And that uh, it is the is the message today. And and it's really I know it's easier said than done. Uh, but again, I joke. That's why we have a job is to help you stay on track and to make sure that you're sticking with the long term, even at those times when it's really really tough to do so. Um, that's where we come in and step step in as your guide. 
to help you help your family get from where you are to where you want to be and stay there. So I think we'll end with that today. Feel free to share this episode as always, you know, with your friends and family. If you think it was valuable, if you think it was interesting, if you'd like to discuss your personal situation further again, remember that you never have to be a client to ask a question. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to set up an intro call with me uh, to discuss your financial situation, or if you'd like a second opinion on your retirement plan or investment portfolio, head over to our website at libertaswealth.com. You can click on the contact link and you can email us there using the form. You can email us directly through uh, the email address info at libertaswealth.com, or you can click on that little button that pops up that says click here to get started. And when you click there, what's going to happen is it's going to take you through some questions that you'll answer, like a survey, so to speak, or a quiz. And then from there, uh, we'll reach out to you and get an intro call set up on the calendar. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, I, uh, I, YouTube, and Spotify. Uh, remember, you can sign up at libertaswealth.com to not only get these updates, but you'll also get access to the screencasts, videos, and articles that we write and send out to our clients uh, delivered as soon as they're released, and they'll get put right in your inbox. You don't have to worry about waiting to, or looking, looking them up online and trying to find them. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com forward slash libertaswealth. Again, I mentioned earlier, I'm on Twitter, at Adam Koch, that's A-D-A-M-K-O-O-S, and I'm also on Instagram, at Adam D. Koch, so Adam D. K-O-O-S. Uh, as I always like to say, to show my appreciation, there's thousands of podcasts out there. You chose to give hours a listen today, so thank you so much again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Koch. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.